Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There's a fight right now that has me riveted. It's a battle between unbeaten heavyweight Deontay Wilder. He's 30 and 0 with 30 knockouts. And he's going up against Malik Scott. Now you may recall Malik Scott was unbeaten. Seemed to be, let's be blunt here, seemed to be tiring against Derek Chisora, was winning the fight, but the fight had several rounds to go. Now I understand this fight has spawned a lot of controversy, right? Scott gets hit with a punch that might have been illegal. He goes down from a shot that looked to be behind his ear. He goes down, the referee starts a count. There's a question on whether Scott beat the count. He's down, he looks lucid, he gets up at what looks to be the count of nine. It's close. The referee calls off the fight even though not much time was left in the round. Now I understand there are those who believe that Scott should have been allowed to continue. Put me in the camp of those uncertain of whether if Scott had been allowed to continue, he would have won the fight. <clears throat> you know, I'm just not sure because I know Derek Chisora is relentless, right? He's going to try to be on you for every round. The fight was a 10-round fight. wasn't a 12-round fight, right? Scott has a great jab, but it seemed to me that Chisora was closing the distance between himself and Scott. Now, I have seen fights where guys get second wins. Let's just say it's debatable, in my opinion, whether Scott would have gotten a second win. Maybe so. Maybe not. We don't know. Here's what I think I do know about Malik Scott. Even though he was out of the ring for more than three years with a very bad bicep injury to his jab hand, his left hand and even though that jab is his Sunday punch it's his best punch he doesn't have a lot of power he beats you with movement and a jab and even though he has sparred with Deontay Wilder and there's a familiarity between the two I believe that at six foot four with movement and a jab I believe Malik Scott at right now three and a half to one as an underdog is a live underdog in this fight. The bet I like and understand this fight is so mispriced that Deontay Wilder is two to nine to win the fight. Think about it, right? Check the odds at your local casino, right? Deontay Wilder is a bit overrated in this fight. Right, the bet I recommend is Malik Scott to win the fight, hedged with Deontay Wilder by knockout. <clears throat> Understand, I view Wilder as not only overrated by the casino for this fight, I view Deontay Wilder as simply overrated. Right, I see the great record. I've seen the great first round knockouts, right? Audley Harrison comes to mind. I know he knocked out Sergei Lakovich pretty early. I understand his long right hand is among the best punches in boxing. Certainly it's among the best punches in the heavyweight division. But I don't see the rest of the game. Right? And the problem is, <clears throat> here, you're not dealing with a stationary opponent like you were when he fought Audley Harrison, right? Harrison doesn't have foot uh, movement, doesn't move around the ring. 
Here you're dealing with a guy who can move around the ring, who has an excellent jab, and who, in my opinion, only has to worry about the long right hand. What I also like is the fact that Scott's tall. Wilder 6'7", Scott's 6'4". Right? Scott will be, I know three inches is a lot, but Scott's tall enough and leans well enough where he can use length to diffuse and roll away from Wilder's straight right hand. Right? Wilder won't be throwing down over the top of what Scott's doing, like let's say Thomas Hearns did to Roberto Duran many years ago. Right? So, since I believe that Wilder, who's never gone the distance, might have stamina problems, might not know how to play chess. In other words, yeah, he can knock you out with a long right hand, but can he outbox you? I have doubts, right? Since I believe Malik Scott's going to be moving around the ring and he's going to expose Wilder's inability to hit people when they're on the move. Since I don't believe Wilder has a good left jab. Since I'm a skeptic and I understand there's no film since Wilder's unbeaten where Wilder gets deconstructed, right? Just understand there's also no film where Wilder's up on his toes in the 8th, ninth, 10th rounds. This is a 10-round fight. Malik Scott has only been stopped once. Right? <coughs> Keep in mind, too, Derek Chisora, in my opinion, cuts off the ring better than Deontay Wilder. Right? Derek Chisora is a guy who went the distance with Vitaly Klitschko. Went the distance, quite frankly, I thought he beat Robert Hellenius, right? He's a guy who can crowd you, who gives guys, who use a jab and length problems. Jazora's shorter. Jazora comes inside. Jazora's a bit reckless. He's a stalker. I don't think Deontay Wilder is a stalker. I think Deontay Wilder, simply put, is just a long right hand. I think he's overrated. If you're going to give me three and a half to one odds on Malik Scott just to win the fight, that's leverage I've got to take. But I would hedge it with Wilder by KO. Check the odds to see if the hedge is even possible, right? It is. If Wilder's even a one to two to win by KO. That's a possible hedge because you're getting three and a half to one on the Malik Scott side. But make no mistake, Malik Scott is the better chess player than Deontay Wilder. I don't care what the record suggests, right? Understand Malik Scott was a successful amateur. Understand too, Malik Scott's record is better than advertised because in my opinion, he beat Glassoff, right? They call that a draw, whatever. This is boxing. And the Derek Chisora fight, let's be clear, Malik Scott's winning the fight before he gets dropped, right? Understand, too, that Derek Chisora fight was in Chisora's backyard. Malik Scott is an American. Malik Scott had traveled across the Atlantic for that fight, right? This fight coming up is in Puerto Rico, right? Presumably, neither guy should have the hometown advantage. I believe Malik Scott is going to be moving. He's going to be hitting Wilder, something we haven't seen a lot of in fight. He's going to be hitting Wilder with a jab. Keep in mind, he's almost as tall as Wilder, right? There's going to be familiarity. I believe that when fighters have been in the ring sparring and one guy is the better chess player than the other, right? I believe Malik Scott probably is thinking like a chess player and knows exactly what he wants to do against his former sparring partner. I'm guessing Deontay Wilder is looking at Malik Scott as a guy he can knock out. Not so easy. So I'm rolling with Scott, the guy with the better jab, the guy who's the better chess player. 
the guy who marries the jab with movement. I'm going with him over Deontay Wilder, who, let's face it, is just a long right hand, also with Wilder. You need to look at where his punches are landing. Sergei Lakovic is upset. You need to look at that tape. There's a question on where Wilder landed his shot. Did he hit Lakovic in the back of the head? Right? Well, all I'm saying is now that opponents have film on Wilder, you can imagine Malik Scott's not going to bend his head. He's tall enough at 6'4 to lean back and pump a jab. Will Wilder be able to find him? I have my doubts. I like the underdog Malik Scott hedged with Wilder by KO. Let me hear from you. Oh, understand the risk involved. If Wilder outboxes Scott for 10 rounds and wins a decision, you lose it all. This is gambling. There's significant risk involved. Okay, I'm going with the three and a half to one underdog. I'm going to hedge the play with Wilder by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments here on YouTube and visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.